My name is uh, Heng Tio Piao. Uh, this year I'm uh, 58. I uh, have a CRT that is implanted uh, in the, right now. Hi, I'm Dr. Xiao and I'm a cardiac electrophysiologist, that is, a heart specialist who deals with heart rhythm disorders. Sometimes in the treatment of heart rhythm disorders, we may need to use implantable cardiac electronic devices. Cardiac implantable electronic devices would include pacemakers, cardiac resynchronization therapy devices or CRT devices, implantable cardiac defibrillators, otherwise known as ICDs, as well as loop recorders. When the heart's natural pacemaker is not working properly, the heart rhythm may be too fast, too slow or irregular. A doctor may implant a heart rhythm device like a pacemaker or defibrillator to restore the heart's natural rhythm. These devices are traditionally implanted in the upper chest beneath the collarbone and are about the size of a stopwatch. These battery power devices are connected to the heart with a lead, a thin flexible wire that is traditionally inserted into the vein into the heart chamber. If the heart beats too slowly, a condition called bradycardia, pacemakers can send electrical impulses to one or more chambers of the heart to stimulate the heart's rate. An internal defibrillator can sense when the heart is beating too fast, called tachycardia, and in this case, the device will send small, painless electrical impulses to correct the heart rate. If the rapid heart rate continues, the defibrillator will deliver a necessary life-saving shock to restore the heart to a more normal rhythm. If the patient has heart failure and the two ventricles of the heart are beating out of sync, a third lead is added to the left ventricle to allow the device to send electrical impulses to stimulate the two lower chambers to resynchronize them to improve the heart's pumping ability. I actually uh, was diagnosed with uh, blockage in three of my blood vessels in the heart. I was admitted and uh, recommended to go for a bypass. After the heart bypass, the function of my heart has weakened. Dr. Xiao then advised to consider uh, putting a pacemaker or in this case a CLT. The procedure is fairly similar for all these devices and the procedure is usually done in an outpatient setting or day surgery setting. So typically patients having fasted overnight would be admitted on the day itself for the procedure. And following the initial preparations, the patient will be transferred to the invasive cardiac catheterization lab where they are then prepared. A venogram will be taken where we inject some dye through a, an IV line in the arm to help us visualize the veins that we're going to use for implantation of the wires or the leads. We infiltrate the skin with a local anesthetic to numb the area before we make the incision. Typically an incision about one and a half to two inches is made on the skin under the collarbone and uh, a pocket is made under the skin to accommodate the uh, cardiac device. From the incision, we will gain access to the arm veins by using a needle and uh, through that needle, we put a wire into the arm vein to put a plastic tube through which the lead or the pacemaker lead uh, wire basically will be introduced into the heart. After we've placed the leads in the correct position, the lead is then connected to the implantable device, the pulse generator, and the whole uh, pulse generator is then placed in the pocket that we created earlier on, and we sew up the incision. The whole procedure takes about an hour on average for pacemakers and for ICDs. For cardiac resynchronization therapy devices, the procedure might take a little bit longer, on average two hours, because of the need to put a third lead, which is technically a little bit more challenging. When I uh, woke up uh, beside the wound that uh, I can feel that is just the wound, uh, apart from that, my whole heart uh, still function normal. I don't feel anything internally. In fact, uh, I didn't even feel that there was something inside the body. So typically, the pacemakers will last on average 8 to 10 years for 
the indication of slow heart rate. Cardiac resynchronization therapy devices may last a shorter time, between five to eight years. ICDs typically have a lifespan of about five to eight years as well. Loop recorders, which are used to record rhythm disorders but do not pace the heart, can typically last about three years on average. During the patient and family education sessions, we would usually discuss with the patient on how to take care of the wound, how to look out for signs and symptoms of wound and device site infection and bleeding, when to come back to seek immediate medical attention, and some lifestyle implications. And at each checkup, the device will be interrogated wirelessly to tell us how much battery life is left and whether there is uh, any malfunction of the device. So I'm very glad everything is uh, fine now for me. I felt it was a blessing that uh, everything went smoothly for me. Thank you.